If you have flannel scraps, you might want to use them to make a patchwork receiving blanket. It's not actually a quilt, but it is quilt adjacent. And today I'm going to show you how to make it. Welcome to EBITDA Studio. My name is Elizabeth and I help you make beautiful things with quilting, pochagi, and embroidery. So this flannel receiving blanket is a quick and easy project that is also super useful. So if you have scraps of flannel fabric, then you'll want to make one of these. Now, this is not a quilt. It is made with reversible patchwork. So it's only one layer of fabric. So that means a couple of things. That means, first of all, it's super easy and fast to make. Um, and so it's not the same commitment as making a full quilt. And that also means it is great for everyday use, for wiping up spills, for having a baby spit up on it, because it can handle all the washing and laundering. Um, so it's not, it's not the same investment as a quilt. It's something that is designed to be used and it's also really beautiful and a great way to use up your scraps. So grab all your pieces of flannel fabric and I'll show you how to make it. Now the one that I made is around 29 inches by 35 inches. So I think that's a nice size for um, throwing over your shoulder or for wrapping up a tiny baby, but you can use the same principles to make one of whatever size you want. I'm gonna show you how to make this and you can either copy this design exactly or you can use your own scraps to make your own design. But for mine, I took my flannel that I had left over and I cut it into bricks and each brick was six inches by 11 inches. So these are all the same size. So once these were cut out, I took a bunch of them and joined them into pairs. So if you wanna see the full layout with the numbers of pieces, then you can click the link below to go to my tutorial, which has a diagram and it has pictures. But I join these into pairs using the reversible Pojagi style patchwork seam. So to join these pieces, I'm gonna put them actually wrong sides together and I'm gonna have one edge offset from the other one. So this is my reversible uh, Pojagi seam and you can check out my full tutorial to see how to do this. But normally when I do it, I would have this edge offset by around a quarter of an inch. And in this case, I'm gonna have it a bit bigger than a quarter of an inch, just because flannel ravels really easily and it will help it be extra secure for a piece that's gonna get a lot of um, washing and wear and tear. So I'm gonna stitch along here by about the same distance as this. And you can just eyeball this, it doesn't have to be exact. Um, approximate is good enough. So once that is stitched, I'm doing this a little bit differently than the normal seam because flannel doesn't press as easily. So I've opened this up and now this seam is gonna go in one direction and I'm just going to fold that under. And if this was um, a nice cotton fabric or a batik, that would crease really easily. You could take it to the iron and press it. But with this flannel, you can press it with an iron or you can just finger press it. And if it's not staying in place, then um, you could put a couple pins. But this is staying in place good enough. And now I'm just gonna go and top stitch the edge of this little flap. And that will just make sure all the raw edges are tucked away inside this seam. So if it's pressed like this and you can see the raw edges, then you know it's not pressed the right way. We just want to press it this way so everything is tucked away in that seam. And now we're going to top stitch that. So here we have our two pieces joined together and we can see at the edge, when I was joining them, they shifted a little bit. And so they don't really line up there anymore. That's not a problem. We can just take a ruler and trim that off so it's a straight line. And then we're gonna take 
another piece and we're gonna add this in the other orientation. So if these two are portrait, this one's gonna be landscape and we'll do the same thing. We will put them wrong sides together, have the edges offset and um, then do the same seam. So here is our piece joined onto the end. And we can see that this is not exactly the same as this width. And yours might vary depending on your seam allowances. So you'll probably need to trim it down so that these edges are straight. And that's not a problem. So once we have this unit done, then we'll be able to join it to the other units. So you'll notice in this one, I've used a bright blue thread so it's easy to see, but in fact, it doesn't matter what color thread you use. You can use any color of thread, but whatever color you choose, it will probably be visible on some of your fabric. So you can either really try and get something to match, or you can just embrace it and realize that it's gonna show and use a totally contrasting color. Um, I tend to use just whatever happens to be in my machine at the time um, to avoid re-threading, but that thread color is just a personal preference, but realize that it is gonna show up on some of your fabric, no matter what you choose. So this is the basic unit that we're making, and we can see in this piece that I've used this unit and I've made three rows. So here we have the cross and two down, cross two down, but I have offset them a little bit. So this one has two down and then a cross. And so they're offset um, so that we don't have seam allowances matching. And that is helpful for a couple of different reasons. First of all, it's helpful because it's not precision piecing. We don't wanna to have to worry about things lining up. So if this section is a little bit shorter than this section, it's fine. It doesn't really matter. The other thing is everyone's seam allowance is gonna be slightly different. And even your own seam allowance in different places, it might be a little bit different. And so it's fine. That's not gonna matter in this project. So I've just made three rows with the pieces and then I've just joined the rows together using the same seam allowance. And then the edge of it is just finished with a simple hem. So you fold over um, a quarter of an inch, half inch, whatever you wanna do, and then fold over again to, uh, to uh, hold that in place and then top stitch right along the edge for a simple hem. And just hem one side at a time, and then your piece is finished. And what a fun project. I'm sure that any mom would love to have something like this, whether to have over your shoulder when you're burping a baby, or to wipe up messes, to wrap up a baby. There's so many uses for this. So if you wanna see the more detailed tutorial with step-by-step -step instructions, you can click the link below. If you're interested in more ideas for reversible patchwork projects, then you can get my free ebook, Rethink Your Scraps, Five Projects That Are Not Quilts. You can get this as well as more tutorials and inspiration at ebitastudio.com.